On the Overclockers Australia Retro Forum, someone gave away this Socket 7 motherboard, but no one was interested. It didn't come with any specifications, but the VRM here told me that this supports the MMX processor. I could also see that it had integrated VGA, sound and a game port. The chipset is from SIS and with three PCI and three ISA slots we have all sorts of options. So I put up my hand for this motherboard, I paid shipping only, so let's take a closer look what this can do. We have three ISA slots, three PCI slots, 512 kilobytes of level 2 cache, three SD RAM slots, two IDE channels and a floppy controller. We have a chipset, it is the SIS 5597. This one actually has integrated graphics and you can see solder points for a VGA connector. However, this motherboard actually uses a different graphics chip. We can see it here, it is the Trident 3D Image 975. This one comes with two megabytes of video RAM on the mainboard, but can be upgraded to four megabytes. And we can see two audio chips from Crystal and we will later see if they work in MS-DOS. The next step was to look for some documentation, drivers and maybe a BIOS update. We have a parallel port, serial port, another serial port over here, two PS2, two USB, VGA, game port and audio. We can see IBM being mentioned here with a model number and after a quick Google search, this turns out to be a motherboard out of a IBM Aptiva 2140. We're using an Intel Pentium MMX 233. These jumpers let you set the clock speed, we have 66 MHz. And these jumpers near the CPU socket lets you configure the CPU multiplier, so I've set it that the CPU runs at 233 MHz. Unfortunately, IBM, like many other companies, are not hosting the drivers and BIOS updates for these old products anymore. It's a real shame. If you have a link to a good archive with IBM drivers, do let me know. Because if it has a BIOS chip, we will flash it. I had to do quite a bit of searching to find an updated BIOS. This one came with BSW US4F from the 3rd of March 1998 and online I found the latest BIOS which is BSW US4G from 15th of December 1998. You run an executable which creates a boot floppy, boot from that disk and then it will flash the latest and greatest BIOS. Like in most of my videos, we're using the GoTek USB floppy drive emulator. This connects directly to the motherboard and lets you boot the machine to install an operating system and also flash the BIOS. For storage, we're using a 250 gigabyte, two and a half inch SATA hard drive from Hitachi. We're using C tools to limit the capacity to 32 gigabytes. We have a SATA to IDE converter and then connected to the primary ID controller on the mainboard. The hard drive gets detected with the full 32 gigabytes in the BIOS without any issues. And I must say this BIOS has actually a nice range of options. It doesn't have anything to do with overclocking, but you can definitely toggle resources, toggle the caches. There are plug and play options. Uh, and yeah, definitely enough uh, to turn this into a decent retro gaming PC. So the next step was installing Windows 98 SE and that installed without any issues. Looking into the device manager, we can see two issues. Firstly, the sound device is not detected out of the box and also it detects two graphics adapters and that's because the SIS chipset has integrated graphics as well as this mainboard coming with the Trident uh, graphics chip. So I looked online and I found the latest drivers for the Trident chip. We have version 645, 5424, 98 and now we have a clear image. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find suitable sound drivers, but with this mainboard having three PCI and three ISA slots, you have a choice of many, many sound cards. You can go with ISA for better DOS compatibility or with PCI, so lots of choices also with the graphics card. 
Next up, I wanted to check out performance in MS-DOS. Then I used Unisound, which is a really cool program. Uh, it basically can initialize plug and play ISA sound cards. And look at that, we have uh, Sound Blaster compatible sound, uh, DMA1, Interrupt 5, Address 220, and MIDI on 330. So that is perfect. And we have a few games that I've tested. Um, so yeah, Sound Blaster sound working out of the box. I ran SpeedSys and we're getting a score of 174 and that lines up nicely with the MMX 233. DOS performance is pretty decent. In 3D Bench we're getting 109, in Chris's 3D Bench 86, in the PC Player Benchmark 44 and in Doom 73. Quake runs at 41 FPS. This is at 320 by 200. At 640 by 480 we're getting 30.8 in Chris's 3D Bench, 16.9 in the PC Player Benchmark and 6 FPS in Quake. At this point I was curious if we can get better performance with a PCI graphics card. This is a video card we will check out in a future video. You can buy this brand new. It's got the ATR Rage XL chip and has a PCI interface. And indeed we're getting better performance in 3D Bench 1.0C 149, Chris's 3D Bench 121, PC Player Benchmark with 51, Doom runs at 86 and Quake 45 FPS at 320 by 200. But the biggest performance boost we see at 640 x 480, Chris's 3D Bench 42.8, the PC Player Benchmark 21.6 and Quake more than twice the speed 13.7 FPS. Because we have a Pentium MMX, we can use SetMul to slow down the CPU. A while ago, I did the 136 in one project. So you can slow down the CPU in 136 discrete steps. I will put a link to this project down below. And what you can do is you can slow it down and you will get a performance of only 31.2 FPS with enabled mainboard cache. If you disable the motherboard cache, you will slow down to 15.3 FPS, making this machine perfectly capable to run Win Commander at the perfect speed. And in the background, I will now showcase a few DOS games. We've got games such as Prince of Persia, The Heart of China, Lotus 3, Lemmings, The uh, Fate of Atlantis, Gateway and Space Quest 6. And now, yep, yeah, let's summarize this video. What do I think about this main board? Well, it sounds actually pretty good. We have a motherboard that's highly integrated with onboard graphics, onboard sound, decent performance under MS-DOS. With an MMX uh, CPU, we can slow it down and play some older games. We have PCI and ISA slots, so a huge range of cards that we can use um, with a focus on DOS or Windows, whatever you like and the BIOS options are also pretty decent. So yeah, it looks like this is a winner. However, there is one big issue that might be a deal breaker, and that is how the heck do you turn this motherboard on? Uh, I couldn't find the pins to turn this mainboard on. So what I did was simply um, uh, unplug the ATX power connector and plug it back in, and that triggers the uh, motherboard to turn on. Now, if you are familiar with this IBM Optiva, uh, maybe you've had it in the past, or maybe you've got access to some uh, manuals that IBM removed from the support website, please let us know down below in the video description. I'm always uh, looking out for value options. Uh, I understand people are chasing Gigabytes and Asus and DFI and all sorts of uh, really good main boards, but prices are quite high. So uh, looking at OEM solutions uh, can definitely uh, help keep the prices down. But if you can't turn on the machine, then that can be a deal breaker. But if we can solve that issue with the power button, then this is a motherboard I can definitely recommend. And hopefully you can get it for a decent price. Maybe not on eBay, but uh, have a look at computer recyclers uh, that sell old workstation and older computer parts. Um, yeah, 
It would be a shame to throw such a board away. It's very versatile, lots of options for MS-DOS, Windows 3.11, but also Windows 95 and 98. Maybe not so much the latest uh, 3D games because the processor will hold you back here, but for the early Windows 95, 98 games, this can also be a solid platform. So yeah, guys, there you have it. Let us know what do you think of this main board. I will leave resource links down below in the video description. And we also have a few affiliate links if you want to support the channel. Uh, those links don't cost you anything if you make a purchase. Thank you. And My yeah, give man. it a like. Uh, subscribe to the channel Yikes. if you haven't done so already. And I shall see you soon with another one.